Can you guess what is on my grill? And no, it's not my cat. In fact, this is one of the most hunted animals in the whole of Europe. And I'm going to give you my favorite recipe for a tasty and juicy piece of meat. A big thanks to Napoleon Grills for sponsoring this episode. I recommend that everybody tries this at least once in their lifetime. And if you never had it before, it's about time you try it. I'm going to warn you ahead of time because this is going to be super, super easy to do at home. I'm just going to drizzle on a little bit of olive oil on to this beautiful animal. If you guess what it is yet, I'm going to rub it in real good. Make sure that I get a little bit of it everywhere. And I'm going to take the Pitmaster Gyro seasoning and I'm going to sprinkle it onto this beautiful animal. Look at that. I want to get a nice layer of seasoning on top of this. And you got to make sure you get a little bit of this everywhere. Most of the meat is on the butt, so the butts do matter. There we go. Look at that. That is looking freaking fantastic. I want to make sure I get some of it in there. And then it's time to get the rotisserie skewer out because one of the easiest techniques to make meat taste great is using a rotisserie. Trust me, you will never ever regret investing in one of these rotisseries. Now, the only thing you got to be mindful of is just to make sure that you put the piece of meat in properly and secure. So the rotisserie skewer runs right through the animal and then I use the pins to secure the legs and the torso. Same thing on the other side. There we go. Now you see how easy it is to get on. And as you can see, it's not secured yet because that's what we need to do on the barbecue. And I will be cooking this on my favorite Napoleon grill. Once we get it in, you can see that the leg is actually touching the grill grate. So I have to remove it and now I can center my roast. Then turn on the burners and I'm going to start with a mild heat. And heat from only coming down from below. Of course, I got to switch on the rotisserie. When it starts rotating, I'm going to give it about 10 minutes with the lid closed to settle in and tighten up a little bit. As you can see, it firmed up, especially the sloppy bitch, they shrunk up and got back in. And this is the moment where you check if the skewers are secure so your roast doesn't start to flop around or get loose or anything. As you can see, there's a beautiful dry crust building up on the outside of this roast. That is good, but it also means we need to hurry up with the rest of the meal. So I'm gonna quarter some tomatoes. Make sure that I remove the core. Of course, they all go into the pan. In which I'm also gonna place a beautiful chunk of feta cheese. A zucchini, head and butt removed. And then cut up into bite-sized chunks. A couple of red onions, sliced a little finer because if I cut them any larger, they won't cook as fast as the tomato and the zucchini. I'm gonna drizzle on some olive oil and of course the Pitmaster X Giros seasoning. And as you can see, the beautiful roast is doing an amazing job. Now it's time to put the Scottsburg cast iron pan underneath the roast. Now, you need to be careful with these legs so they don't touch the actual pan. So I'm going to watch for that. And if they do, I'm just going to move my pan around to avoid touching them. But the cool thing now is that this animal is rotating. Its juices are just dripping onto the pan and onto the vegetables that we have cooking underneath. And of course, I'm going to stick in a wireless thermometer, making sure that I keep my eye on the core temperature of the roast. Now, I want it in the thickest part, which is in this case, the bottom. I'm just gonna stick it in and that way I always know what the core temperature is. There's one problem with this setup and the problem is that the heat is coming from underneath but now it's protected by the vegetables sitting right here at the bottom and my roast is not cooking properly. But the cool thing about this grill is that it has a back burner which I can switch on, ignite and then the heat comes from the back like a real rotisserie. But I'm not gonna set it to the highest position because this is a delicate roast. I know you think that that's it, but I got one more trick on my sleeve to make this even better. I'm gonna take a lemon and cut a couple of slices out of it, put it in my Scottsburg pan, add half a pack of butter, drizzle on some olive oil, and sprinkle on the Gyro Spitmaster egg seasoning. And this goes into the barbecue to slowly melt. Because once that butter starts melting, <laughs> I'm gonna brush it onto my roast all I want to do is drizzle it on, let it rotate with the meat. Of course, I put the gyro seasoning in there so it helps it stick and we'll get a little bit more flavor on it. You can see instantly the dry crust on the outside gets a little baste in. Wow, look at that.
once I got my core temperature that I'm looking for, which is 75 degrees Celsius, look at that. Isn't that a thing of beauty? <laughs> and if you could just smell this, it will blow your mind. You would go completely crazy and you would just probably slam your face into this because I want to eat this so bad. It looks so good. It's got like an extra crust on the outside of this beautiful roast. Of course, you want to know what this is, right? Well, if you guessed it, then you commented down below already. But this is not my cat. This is not my rabbit. This is a hare. This has been running around the fields outside this farm and it's a pretty nice size hare that's been shot by a local hunter. Did you see how buff it was? It's like, mm. it's like it went to the gym a couple of times. Freaking amazing. Why do I have to wait? I hate that part so much. Now, this is one of those meals that you could share with uh, your friends, your family. You can do this as a Sunday roast, but my kids, especially my kids, if I put anything in a, a wrap, or like a flatbread. They love it. I don't know why that is. I don't know why. That, that's a, like a rabbit. And I say, no, it's like a hare. Then they say, but dad, I don't want to eat that. And then I say, no, I understand. You don't want to, but it's freaking delicious. And you really want to, but you just don't know yet. And because I put it in a wrap with tasty things, which are healthy, they just somehow shut down their brains and think it's okay because it's in a wrap. I don't know. So I'm just gonna be a good dad. I'm gonna do what I gotta do to make my kids love this, fall in love with it, and eat it and crave it for the rest of their lives. Even the legs, I'm just gonna chop them up. Some of those veggies on. Whoa, look at that. That looks so freaking good. Roasted veggies, and of course, some of that cheese, that feta cheese. I roasted in the pan. Look at how soft it became. <laughs> My version of a hair burrito, Greek style. It's so non-traditional in all kinds of ways, but it's just great food. Everybody loves this. Mm. That is good. It's so succulent and juicy. And it's not gamey, it's not crazy anything. It's just some animal roaming around eating the grass. I'm sorry for eating cute fluffy animals and enjoying it. What am I even apologizing for? 